And it's great to have you on Capital Market Live on Channels Television. I hope you're enjoying the weekend right now. Time to um, take stock of what played out in most of the markets we track globally. And um, right here, I would say uh, major bosses uh, around the globe um, ended Friday's trading session mostly mixed as traders assessed when most of the world's most influential central banks will begin to unwind the tight monetary policy stances adopted in a bid to tame sky-high inflation, even though we see some of the inflation numbers um, coming down to the, most of their targets at uh, this time, 2%. Well, we've seen America Dow Jones Industrial Average 0.77% uh, down, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq that uh, uh, outperformed by 0.16% um, on Friday. The S&P um, 500, that was down 0.14%. Um, uh, well, in Europe, the index is... Um, closed slightly up after stocks soared to an all-time high. In a previous session, the UK's FTSE 100 index uh, gained about 0.61%, while Germany's DAX that rose 0.15%, uh, while France's CAC index closed the day down by 0.34%. Um, and across the Asia-Pacific region, uh, Japan Nikkei 225, uh, that was a loan gainer, up 0.18%, while China's Shanghai Composite um, Index and Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index ended Friday negative. And back here in Nigeria, the NASD OTC securities market's performance ended the week positive as the index rose by 4.31% week to date, while investors gained about 60 billion naira. However, the volume of securities traded this week fell by 88.58% to 4.55 million units, while value rose by 386% to close. The week at 1.79 billion naira, while the number of deals carried out that was at 79. Uh, top advances for the week: uh, Aridol Holdings, Afriland Properties, and uh, Acon Petroleum. While the top decliners are Double One PLC, Friesland Campina, and Central Securities Clearance System, which also emerged as the most traded security. And the domestic stock market ended the third trading week of March in the red. No thanks to profit taking on some bellwether stocks, particularly the shares of MTN Nigeria. As a result, the market's main index fell by 0.42%, bringing the month and year-to-date performance to 4.7% and 40% accordingly. However, sectoral performance of listed equities was largely positive, except for the consumer goods counter, which dropped by 0.37%. Julie PLC topped a list of 50 gainers uh, with a 46.10% price appreciation, while Julius Berger Limited had led 31 other uh, losers down by 17.15%. That's Julius Berger PLC. While the trio of UBA, FBN Holdings, and Access Holdings um, come with the top three contributors to a total of 1.73 billion equities traded uh, this week. So today we'll shift focus now to the financial services sector of the NGX with most of the uh, their unaudited uh, financial reports um, out. Let's analyze some of them as investors expect um, audited 2023 uh, results. Let's look at some of the numbers and uh, to help us unpack that, uh, we have Mr. Ambrose Amordian, Chief Research Officer, Invest Data Consulting uh, Limited. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, Ladi. Fantastic. So, you're spending your Saturday with us. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good. definitely. <laughs> but let's talk money now. You know, the, the financial services sector, we know that's a, that's a really favored one. Even for the week, we see uh, the banking counter and insurance did really, did really well. You know, those counters did really well um, this week. But let's look at some of the um, on auditor results, that's looking at profits, yep. you know, at, at for some of the uh, tier two banks that we track here, we see Fidelity Bank there, 101.3 billion. That was a profit for 2023, um, up 100, uh, 117%. That's, you know, compared to the previous year. Wemmer Bank, that's at 23.36 billion. That's 105% um, up. Jai's Bank, 10.97 billion, 59.40% up uh, for the year. Um, Sterling Bank, 21.52 um, billion, that's 11.50%. Uh, so um, definitely we see, um, not, not bad, you know, from what we've seen so far. Talk to me about what to expect, you know, for the audit. Now, see, see right there, 117% for Fidelity Bank, Wemba Bank, 
105 percent not looking bad at all yeah actually you look at the nigeria banking system i would say that our bank is so resilient starting from 2008 when the market had uh, some you no know, issues with terms of crash of med down the global economy our bank is the world has supported the economy uh, the market to hit about uh, 64,000 uh, in this then but these days we are seeing because of the new listing of some you know, big tech company and uh, energy was seeing some you know, changes in the market. I call it a change of structure and change of in the market. But still, the bank sector remains the, the most active sector in terms of uh, marketable, in terms of liquidity for do I want to trade in and out. You see liquidity, there, you see volume there. For me, that sector remains relevant anytime, any day. And also in our history, it's our most consistent sector that also pay you no know, investors dividend on yearly basis. And also Even though the CBN has said, do not pay dividends no, <laughs> with some before, of your. <laughs> no, no, even before now, I think since September, we're hearing that news, they you know that you know people, if you look at the numbers we just read that now, then most of the banks have really performed well. Take away their FS gain, they are still you no know, solid to pay good dividend. For me, that is the beauty of banking sector. I would say that our banking sector in Nigeria, the, the operators are very smart and they understand the system. They know how to take advantage of the system at any time. And that is why this uh, continual you know, kind of uh, high you know, interest rate was seen or high yield in the market is a plus for the, you know, the financial sector, the insurance and all. But I believe that uh, the numbers are joined now will give an investor an insight of what to do. That is why well, last week, or the week of that review now, we have seen that the market had a misperformance. But looking towards the end of the, uh, the week, on Thursday and Friday, we saw renewed buying interest in the banking stocks. Even when NPC is you know, it's, uh, around the corner by next week, Monday and Tuesday, it says that investors in Nigeria understand that this is the sector that really drives the, 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 the market. Despite that all those there, what I call uh, the trillionaire clause in terms of uh, their cap or their earnings, but the banks have been consistent. And for that, we expect that the banks also will do well in terms of dividend payouts. Yes, everybody might be worried. Nobody knows what to come out from CBN. Also, most of the results have been delayed. We still be on all this way. That also is it that they are still screening the numbers or they are still investigating the number or examining the number. But I think that at the end of the day, if you really want this bank to capitalize, you need the investors also to reward their what their shareholder because they are coming back to the market because you're not really going to recapitalize for them. They're simply going to inject money into this bank. No, it is the public who inject money. And if you allow them not to pay dividend to their investors or their shareholders, it will send a signal. For me, I believe that that is the way to start. Allow them to pay dividend. Take and would you say to change your rule? Because most of them are solely to pay dividend from after you know outside the their first gate, their interest in come and trading has boosted also their performance. For me, there's no cause for alarm for the marketing sector at all. And if you want to drill down on some of those numbers we see up there, uh, with the likes of Fidelity Bank, um, 101.3 uh, billion, quite impressive. Wemo Bank, uh, 23.36 billion. Let's drill down on these banks. Now, no. these are most of the top tier two banks. If you look uh, at the these six second tier banks, I will tell you that uh, Fidelity, you know, has really you know, become a leader in that sector or in that category of second tier. Also moving away from second tier to world, even to those first tier. Because in Nigeria, we have only just two tiers, first tier and second tier. But the, the, word, the third one, which is not pronounced, the, the one like, uh, you know, ETI and Stambik, they are not in first tier, they are not in second tier. And that, um, you, uh, what's it called? Fidelity is all moving to that category. Because now, look at their payout, their performance. In the last four years, you know, they grow their performance, their sectors of their top line with more than 68% for a good four years, and also their earning per share has moved from as low as well, 98 Kobo to 39 16 Kobo. That tells you that this bank has really, you know, whether all the storm in the economy up and down during the COVID 19 and all. For me, it's a good thing for fidelity. And also, not only that, they are expanding. And when we are expanding, we are building capacity. And I see that capacity is going to impact more on fidelity. For that, investors are still looking at where are this bank going because I believe that the future of investment is. Forecasting where the company is going, it's not just looking at the past performance. Because we are seeing that as they are expanding, they are going to other African country. They are already in the in, in, in UK where they bought, uh, you no, know, uh, Union Bank, uh, you know, uh, UK PLC, and that is another investment. Also, I learned that also the plans are already on ground to go to some African country. That means they are all trying to build what we call, um, you know, organic growth by also by taking your business to different uh, duplicate zone or you know, the world so that at the end of the day, it will not impact your bottom line. I see fidelity as a bank for the future. And that means any investor is thinking the future to start to invest in this company because these second tier banks, and I told you earlier that with their performance, they're metamorphosed from you know, second, tier, uh, second tier to uh, going to first year already because if you look at their dividend payout policy, it has also improved. This is a bank that started with 10 Kobo in trade dividend. The same year they pay 40 Kobo, moved to you know, the second year, they pay trade dividend of 25 Kobo. That is more than 100 percent no growth from the previous period. That means it's a sign that this bank is solid. And also if you look at the management of the bank too, I will say that the makeup of the management is that those involved in the management are also like shareholders of the 
of the of the bank. That is that when you are shoulder of the bank, you also in manage, management. You take the the, the, the business toward to high level because you are part owner of the bank. So, so you are working for the bank. For me, that is the best way for investors that are thinking long and medium because I believe that there is a lot of uh, future forward for right. daily. Right, but let's, also let's, others like um, let's say the life of uh, Uma Bank. It's also has a prospect. The life of uh, as Wema Bank. Yes. Right? Yeah. The, the life of also SMB. But for, in that category, I said that this bank is moving out of the second tier toward. To first year or the left the the, the third year that's not mentioned in Nigeria, but we know that there's two uh, two uh, stocks uh, banks are not in any tier, not first year. But that means the is only moving that because their performance have point where they are going. But I believe that even the, the proposed uh, you know primary market activities, which uh, I know they are because they are waiting for CBN to bring out guideline. For me, if you are thinking the future, think the world of fidelity. And and definitely, you know, as an investor, and uh, if you're an investor that plays, you know, in the financial services yeah. stocks, you know, at this time, would a good strategy would be to just go and stock up on some of those tier two banks, you know, and hopefully they cross into tier one and make a lot of profit. <laughs> you are really thinking in the mind of, you know, long-term investor, because that's the only way to create wealth. You no know, people that yes, which traders can make money on weekly basis. But those are thinking long, and that's where you see the life of uh, Warren Buffett. Say that any company that you cannot hold for you no know, for ten years don't go in. Well, because you are seeing, yes, yeah. if you are if you are seeing potential you no know, infidelity on all these retail banks, this is the first time they you know take your move. It's like if you don't have them before this uh, stock are as high as for ten naira eighty kubu. Now it has come down to around uh, ten naira for me. Great that means that's probably that going to surpass the fourteen naira eighty kubu that I thought before. That means if you don't really want to think the future, and also don't forget that in any economy. The entry of any economy is what is the banking sector. And that means whether the economy is down or up, the banks will make money. That the only way to be is being the banks. Right. And definitely we, we hope those banks will in turn, you know, look at some of these small businesses. Because we know how some of the Nigerian banks tend to look at small businesses as high risk. You know, hopefully they're ready to take a chance. Some you, of you mentioned something that is very important now. If you look at reality, this is a bank of uh, SME. This is the focus on what on traders. Now they are not, they are not they are also sponsoring all these uh, export uh, no um, no businesses. That is that they want the economy to because it's business that oil in the economy. And that's why I say this they are focused, they are, they are export and uh, traders are uh, focused bank. For me, there is the people that are thinking where to go, I think it's really worth, you know, especially as you just uh, say container banks as future to meet with what with the first year bank. That means you need, you need to talk, invest and think. You know, so where no. else can the first year go at this point? The first year, you no. Know, in equity market, once you get there, you stay no, there. The equity market believe that when you are in a blue chip category, you know, you become like a, a stable company that whether you make profit or not, profit, because you are stable, you are able to pay your profit. But those that are growing are looking in the future. That's why I say move from this one to that level. Right. All right. <laughs> it's still about this um, new recapitalization plans. You know, um, going forward, how are you seeing this impacting you know the banking industry in Nigeria? For me, it's a boost for the banking sector and also for the economy. But only like the way the regulators are going is what I don't really understand. In the history of our market, this is the first time the regulator is trying to perform the sector that they're going to do capitalization. I've not seen it. What I know that regulator will just bring out the deadline, what you need, and, and push to the table. But now you are telling us the move since September, we're hearing this. This is already the end of uh, end of uh, first quarter, no guideline. And for me, many of them will be looking at where are we going. And also, most of the so banks... what did happen this year? <laughs> it, it, it's possible that it don't happen. It's possible that it's going to happen because, you know, ideally, I know I've been in the market for a long time. Do so little, do not let what they do. We just play the card. You are giving you, you no know, six months to meet uh, 25 billion naira for your capital. If you don't have it, you start either your margin or you start the living. Fine, but this one will be hearing it and the banks are still waiting. Waiting. No, also, the investors are well, Maybe because of the new leadership, so they have to... They need time, maybe to you know check out what's on the table. Fine. Also, there are some also banks that also have in, in one issue or the other. For banks like uh, let's say uh, you know FBN Holding, that their case has been cut already. If they want to recapitalize, when you call to case move from you no know, high court to, 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 to Supreme Court to appeal court, it will affect their recapitalization. I think all these I think that we have to look at because if you say you want to recapitalize and no deadline was given, they are all in the dark. Right. So so what do you, when do you see latest that we might get this news? But I'm thinking that you no, know, for it to make me need to me. the banks ready from where, from where you're looking. That's what I'm saying. No, let's let's start from when. I'm really before the end of the second quarter. We should have you know an idea when, when and what because if you look at the the what we call net you know, capital for many of the banks, some of them are robust. Like we mentioned, Fidelity. Fidelity has done about uh, is it not two last the fourth one was the private placement. There is about 13.8 billion on that that they want to do another right. If you look at their asset. Uh, 
the unlimited account. They're about 500 and uh, almost 500 billion. That is around 433.3 billion in terms of uh, net assets. If they come with their uh, right issue, they hit about 500 uh, billion. So they almost got into 1 billion. For me, you say uh, 1 trillion, going to 1 billion. Once they cross the 500 billion, I think it was trillion. For me, they are really solid. And with uh, acquisition of uh, other banks, you know, like what they did, it will expand their what, operation and also boost their performance. But the date is very, very important so that they will know how they are prepared. Even more for others like uh, the Mission First Bank, we have seen the East Bank, you no, know, also in the pipeline. We have seen um, uh, what's called Women Bank done their, um, you know, right issue and it's almost uh, oversubscribed. It tells that Nigerians are ready for the banks. For me, let them give them deeds. So and let investor them appetite is on check, you know, yeah. at this point. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll just take a quick break now. We'll continue the conversation because right now we're aiming for a one trillion dollar economy. Yeah, so we need yeah. The banks to actually step I, I up. I said the banks what we need to drive it. At this time. All right, <laughs> we we'll still have Mr. Morden here with us. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue the conversation. Just stay with us. Welcome back. Well, Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria has unveiled the final roadmap developed from exposure drafts on the floor of this exchange. The Executive Secretary, Chief Executive Officer of the Council, Dr. Rabiu Oloa, says the roadmap is a tool of mainstreaming the implementation of sustainability reporting in Nigeria in phases in the areas of reporting and assurance with timelines. Take a listen. Change Group is hosting the Chair, International Sustainability Standard Board, Mr. Emmanuel Father, in the presence of sectorial directors and other stakeholders who are mindful of the threats of climate change to sustainable living in not just Nigeria but the world at large. Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria is at the fore of this and it aims to attract funding for the transitions required in managing climate change. Just speaking the same language. That is the only way we will in Nigeria be able to attract more global capital because that global capital is going to speak our language. If we are in Nigeria uh, becoming the most transparent supply chain, the most credible because we have appropriate metrics to, de to describe what is an inclusive supply chain, a deforestation-free supply chain, a regenerative agriculture supply chain, a carbon sinking supply chain, you will be, we will be in Nigeria benefiting most also from those European companies that are going to need to invest in their supply chain to make sure that that supply chain is EU ready. The highlight of the meeting is the unveiling of the roadmap report, which asserts Nigeria's leadership role in the adoption of ISSB's sustainability standards. The Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Dr. Rabi Oluwo, is on hand to take the message to businesses. And governance, they were business non-essential. About 10 years ago, you know, we began to see businesses, you know, adopting this as a good to have. Today, we see it as a responsible business practice, but we are moving into the next phase, which is the phase of the future, whereby we make sustainability issues mandatory for businesses because we've seen the benefit that will come. Uh, today, about 3% of global uh, green finance finds its way to Africa, and even less so for Nigeria. And unless we begin to speak the language of sustainability, uh, which is a global baseline, uh, whereby we can document um, business performance, not just by numbers and figures, but on how companies and businesses impact the society. With moves like this, the FRCN believes that the country will retain the fundamentals as the largest on the continent and be the hub for investment in the ongoing sustainability-related developments. All right, let's continue the conversation on financial um, services, uh, companies listed on the NGX at this time. And I've been discussing with uh, Mr. Ambrose Amordian, Chief Research Officer, Invest Data Consulting Limited. He's still here uh, with me. Um, thank you so much for staying on. And um, I remember going coming into, at, at the end of 2023, you know, when you look at some of these stocks and their performance, you can see uh, most of these backing stocks did over 100%, you know, in profit. That's from their share price. And definitely, as an investor, you hit yourself and say, why didn't you get in early? You know, and now, this is another year. First quarter is almost over, you know, right now. Tell me some of the names, you know, in this banking 
um, sector that we should be looking at, you know, at this time, before the end of 2024? Actually, you just said it all that uh, the advanced supply and capitalization is another way of boosting their performance. You know that, you know, you can't give what you don't have and price feed on what on earnings. And if you're expanding your business, you expect to earn more money. That means the banking sector remains you no know, relevant anytime because the policy of the uh, of the government, especially the monetary policy, is favoring the bank. So any environment where you're having high interest rate, the banks might. They don't need to struggle because they earn more money easily. And also now our banks are going holding. Most of the banks in Nigeria are going to. That means they are doing other business apart from banking business. That means that will further boost their work, their performance. And I see that fidelity is almost growing that way. Because as we're expanding, you need to also go hold um, from a holding company because you can do other business. Because they are still they are specialized in trade. Other business also help them to work, to earn more. I believe that uh, for those that are thinking future, look at those banks that their price is relatively below, below 10 naira, and those was for long term. But for dividend income that are consistent, look at the first year banks. They still make you no know, lot of money to me. You know, the life of Zinez Bank. Zinez Bank is paying you, you know, 3 naira, 50 kubo, 4 naira. The price is this now. It still makes sense because if you are earning 10% in dividend, and also we are making um, capital appreciation because these days, I'm interested in the company that is growing your payout, not really having 10% because if the company is growing earnings, you're growing your payout, it's going to make And that's what I've seen in um, infidelity. I want to revert well. Look at how it started 2023 with a dividend of what, of 25 kubo against 10 kubo they paid in 2022. It's a sign of it. And also, if you look at their full year earnings on the tail account, they're about 3 naira, 16 kubo. That is that from there, if the bank decides to pay 1 naira, they decide to pay 80 kubo plus, uh, no, 25 kubo. That's almost 1 naira. And once you pay 1 naira as dividend, you automatically, you are out of the second tier banks. As I just said, the banks has future. For me, this is how investors should look at and to invest. And most of the banks, like I mentioned, that are below 10, look at them, but for dividend income, Look at those that they were in the first year. Right. Yeah. All right. So we're going to a new week. Um, what do you see? You know, coming this, uh, this this market has stayed managed to stay above that hundred thousand level. That's the all share index of the NGX. What are you seeing going to next week? Is it profit taking or are you seeing some cherry picking? No, we're seeing a lot of uh, improved uh, momentum next week. Why this is the the week we're seeing uh, the the official you no know, deadline for submission of a uh, result. Especially those that have released their audited account in January, so that was to release their audited, and those that have not released audited uh, audited account in January, they've done their result already. They've still the life of all the you know the cement company because they didn't release their audited in January. The result already in the market. The bank that we are waiting for an insurance company. Insurance company is a little delayed insurance company because of what? Because we're having a, a new no accounting principle that they want to adopt. That is why most of them are finding that they will be delaying their in their result. But for the banks that all eyes and because we believe that these banks they are the ones that pay the more dividends. They also shape the market. Also, the life of uh, other service sectors that are yet to reach the results. They all have a uh, next week, you no, know, for the final date to submit the results. Because if not, you pay fine. And which of the shareholder or company want to go and tell you that because we delay and final result are not paying fine. You know, in this kind of environment, I think that for that, expect that before 31st of March, we'll see and that also change the momentum and the sentiment in the market by next week. Despite that, all eyes are still on the MPC meeting to see the outcome of MPC meeting next week. But I believe that the MPC meeting for me, yes, we have seen the signal of no, um, More hawkish, 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 no, hawkish. Uh, but I believe that, uh, like every member's you know, hawkish. Well, I believe that, you know, you did your first uh, MPC meeting in February. That was around 26, 27, which is almost the last you know, days of the month. And then we have seen inflation for, for that uh, month. See how it ballooned to about uh, 31.7. And for me, the meeting you are going to be just to review the impact of this, uh, your hike for 400 basis points, what has happened in March. It is not going to hike another rate because we have not seen the impact of that until we see the inflation figure for the month of March. Or none because you are chasing inflation and also to attract foreign investors. That's why you are, you know, so that they can bring in their, their you know, hard earned money. But don't forget that at the same time, you are scrapping the economy. How long can we chase inflation but at this you, rate? You are scrapping the economy for foreign investors to bring money for you because if you want to solve the, you know, the supply angle of the FS problem we're having, you get supply. What of the economy? Because if you continue to increase uh, rate, you are pushing the economy to you know, already why. For me, we're in a contrasting state of the economy. Because if we are seeing inflation at almost uh, the highest in the field of Nigeria, I mean, interest rate the highest, then that is already we're in and we see contraction. And CRR at over 40%. Already we're in contraction. At this time. So and that is why like businesses might not get any... Yeah, that is why. If, there, if there's no business, there's no economy. Because the business that are the economy, that means if you are targeting to just solve the... FSA, that's why I said, you know, not that they are wrong in hiking rate. We're not against them. But an Nigerian economy, look at where we are. You know, if you are hiking rate, you are pushing a lot of business out of business. And that will cause also insecurity. Because if people are closing down their shop, people are out. No, they say, you know, if a man has no food, he can think otherwise. But if you are engaged, you think also the normal way. I believe that, look at the economy you want to protect and look at the foreign investors you want to attract. And also, don't forget that most of these foreign investors, they're not coming because, you know, we have gotten it right. They are coming to take advantage of your rate hike. They come and stay six months because they are coming, we're going to guarantee them. 
that so when they are going, money yes, the they, yes, we need people that will bring long term fund. The you know the FBI that to the long term you know, the investors, foreign investors that want to establish, you know. Factory in Nigeria, but because of insecurity, we are able to establish the factory. We need to address some issues. So is it time for the is it time for the MPC committee to say, you know what? Maybe it's not about raising interest rates yes. at this time. Maybe it's not about attracting you know foreign investors at this time. Let's How watch, about we solve? Let's some watch. Of no, the let's problems? watch the impact of what we have done the last MPC meeting. Because ideally, in any in any, in any well, this inflation is driven majorly by food inflation from the numbers we see for food inflation. That's why we need point. to address our security. The time of the the physical and the money to shake your hand. I mean, so since I do not really using interest rate to to drive uh, to you know check right. rate, uh, you know inflation. I see a lot right. of uh, opportunities. So uh, a few more days, uh, just about Monday, then Tuesday, yeah. we're going to get the decision exactly from the. <laughs> <laughs> Monetary Policy Committee. Exactly. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your Saturday um, with us. Uh, Ambrose Amodian, Chief Research Officer, Invest Data Consulting Limited. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. So that's how your money performed this week. Definitely waiting for the embassy decision. That's for next. We're going to cover that live on Channel Television. Thank you so much uh, for watching this edition. I'm Ladi Williams. From me and the team at Channel's HQ, it's bye for now.